Hello everyone, and welcome back to Soccer Unboxing. So in today's video, the recent um, Wonder Festival Summer 2022 has come and gone, and there have been a lot of nice looking figures that have been shown off, and I basically want to do this video as sort of, you know, showing you guys which figures stood out to me and which ones that I'll consider pre-ordering, which ones I will definitely be pre-ordering, so on and so forth. Yeah, so there's that. There's a lot of standout figures, and obviously my wallet cannot contain them all, so I'm gonna have to basically pick and choose from this selection. And yeah, so without further ado, let us get started. So I actually made a list for this one fest on my My Figure Collection page, so I'll have that link in, in the description below while I go through this. Initially, I'm going to kind of be in the corner again and showing you basically from my iPad screen of, you know, the list that I have at the moment. So I have a total of 33 figures on here. Unfortunately, some of the figures that I liked um, unfortunately, there's no pictures of them on My Figure Collection at the moment, so at the end of this video, I'm probably going to just show them, like, on screen at the end, so yeah. So let's get started with the very first figure. This is by QuestQ. This is the Toho Project Hakure Reimu Komajo Densetsu Edition. So I actually kind of remember this Toho game. It is supposed to be a Toho Castlevania game, so the art style is obviously a little bit more edgy, a little bit more gritty. But I really do like these sort of like more mature character designs and I really do like the way uh, this Reimu figure looks. I like all of the, the folds, the shading, and you know, just the sculpt of her overall looks great. Um, this one I'm like slightly considering just because I do have another figure from Toho uh, Denketsu on this list because I do overall like that sort of art style for that sort of Toho Castlevania spin-off. So yeah. This one, um, we'll see when it goes up on pre-order if I will consider buying this one or not. After that one, we have a Fate figure. Now, I... <laughs> Fate, obviously there's a lot of character figures from that series, and I'm only picking a select few that I would like to have for my collection, because uh, there's just some specific character designs that I like, and I worry that you know, if I get into the series, then I want them all, so I'm being kind of picky with the characters that I want figures for. But this one kind of stood out to me, just because of the sculpt overall, and this is the Fate Grand Order Altria Pendragon 1 8th Lancer. So this is made, oh, it's Lancer Alter <laughs> by QuestQ. I thought it was made by Alter, the manufacturer, but okay. So overall, it's a very impressive figure overall. I really love the sculpt of the horse, I feel like that's a highlight, and just her pose overall looks fantastic. Uh, if I can bring up also the, I guess the concept art for this, yeah that's what it's kind of supposed to look like, it does look very sick, it's probably going to be a super expensive figure, but yeah, I just wanted to mostly put it on it to highlight it because it is obviously a gorgeous, gorgeous figure overall, but it's gonna probably be a skip for me just because of how tall this is gonna be and also the price. <laughs> so yeah, very beautiful, uh, but for me personally, a skip. After that one, we actually have a Fate character again, but this one is most likely, or I'm closer on the most likely going to be pre-order side, and it is again by QuestQ. We have the Fate Grand Order Shoot and Doji 1 7th caster version, so yes. Shoot and Doji is probably one of my favorite Fate like character designs, and I would like to obviously pick up one of her figures. I know there's that sort of like Quest is also making like sort of a festival one. I'm not too sure. I'll pop it up on the screen. Um, that one was tempting, but I just decided to skip it in the end. And then there's obviously the Max Factory Shoot and Doji, as well as some other ones that I can't remember who manufactured them off the top of my head, but. I think I just, I don't know, I overall really like this one. I love, you know, the base. She's got like the big sake gourd. She's got her mallet and it's just a very nice like figure overall and bringing up the full picture of like the colors in this figure, I think they look fantastic. And yeah, she's very gorgeous overall, very nice character design. So yeah, this one is, I'm um, probably going to be my sort of shoot and doji representation in my collection because I think it's just an overall very nice looking figure overall and I cannot wait to see this one painted. So 
more fate. Um, yeah, there were like I think only three. Uh, yeah, I think I only have no four. The, okay, so there's a couple of fate figures on this list, and this is another one that I am kind of considering pre-ordering, and it is by Alter or Altair in this case, because it's the male figure line for Alter. This is the Fate Grand Order Gilgamesh 1 8 Archer version. Uh, when I saw this figure, if I can even get a good picture of him, I thought it was very hot, okay? <laughs> like, it, I don't know, it just took my breath away for a second, okay? And, I don't know, he just looks so good overall. I love all of the gold details. If I can obviously show, there we go, a better picture of him. All the gold details look fantastic on him. The red with the gold looks great. His tattoos or markings on his body look clean. And obviously he's got like a weapon. <laughs> I don't know, it's just an overall like stunning Gilgamesh figure. And I might consider picking this one up just because I think, again, he's hot. And I just think, you know, I also think Gilgamesh has a pretty cool design and I do actually kind of like him with his hair down compared to up a little bit, so yeah. Who knows? I'll see with this one depending on the overall price of it, cause yeah, but he's very beautiful overall. Now moving on to this next figure, which is a- I feel like a lot of people have been talking about and I am tempted to pre-order this. This is the Bomber Girl Aqua 17th Vampire Negligee version by uh, manufactured by Amakuni and distributed by Hobby Max Japan. I have no words for it. I think it's just an overall like sick looking figure. Uh, she is like pretty blue, but I feel like the different shades of blue help it not feel like monotonous and just her face, this pose, yeah. And also the yellow kind of helps like bring a pop of color to this blue figure. And yeah, she just looks sick. This is a sick looking figure. And there was another one of her released, like, quite a while ago, but I think this is the one that's, like, the way to go. And yeah, I don't know if there's actually an original art for this. Okay, we're just gonna stick with this. <laughs> but yeah, she just looks sick, she looks beautiful and sadistic, and this one is also, you know, on the I will, bu I will buy side. So yeah, very looking forward to, um, because it's painted, it's probably gonna be up for pre-order soon. The price <laughs> so yeah again the price will determine whether or not i get her but i'm on the side of most likely getting this figure now the next one is another fate character there's a few on this list but i thought this design was very cute overall and this is the fate grand order benny enma saber by amakuni i just thought she looked just super cute with the sparrows and this this cute little set piece overall the one thing i'm noticing now as i look at this picture is like kind of the peg she's kind of supposed to be in. I feel like this figure would kind of like lean over time or <laughs> it's kind of hard to tell like with her shoes if they're like they look like they're platforms or something. There's only really one picture on my figure collection so I can't really you know see how this figure like fits in to like the box that she's standing on because I worry that this might be a figure that kind of leans over time with the weight. So yeah but Overall, I really like this character's design with, and also the sparrows. I think the sparrows are a very nice touch and yeah. This one is, for me right now, on the maybe side. It's cute, but I feel like there's some like just other figures that kind of stand out to me more than, than her, but we'll have to see. So after that one, we are moving on to a little bit more of a kind of lootish section. We have uh, from SkyTube, we have the Rena 1 6th figure uh, by Alphamax, who manufactures this one. So this is an original character by Saitom, and overall I just think she's super duper cute overall. I really like the sort of puffy jacket with this sort of like made outfit look, is what it looks like. Uh, bringing up the original illustration, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to read what it says on Castle on the Hill, that's what it says on her jacket. Oh, and I also like, I actually never really looked at the original like color illustration, but I have to say I really like the red and the black and the white and she's got these these boots with like flames on them. So yeah, very cute overall. Um, very much into consideration now after I've seen the original art by Saitom. So yeah, she's very, very cute overall. So now after that Saitom figure, we have another Skytube figure. This is, okay, I am. It's not too lewd. 
<laughs> this is the uh, China Fu Shitagi Akuma Chan 1 6 by, again, Alpha Max, Sky Tube. She just has like very nice sort of like lingerie, and I just kind of like the, you know, the pose of her, and just, yeah, I think the lingerie is kind of what got me. I just really like the sort of details in that one. Um, and she also has, I think she's also wearing, it looks like a jacket behind her. Kind of hard to tell, but I just overall like this design. Uh, this one is on the maybe side. As much as I like that sort of design for that lingerie, I'm not too sure if I feel like I want to get this. But yeah, just wanted to point her out because I think she's super cute overall. After that, we have another Fate character. And this one caught my eye just because of the pose and because I really liked it. And I just wanted to point it out. Won't be pre-ordering this, but I thought it was cool overall. And this is the... Geki Joban Fate Stay Night Heaven's Feel 3 Spring Song Mato Sakura 17th Grail of Makiri version by Alter. That's a big mouthful, but yeah. I. Okay, if I show her, yeah. I don't know, something about like the pose of this character, and she looks like she's obviously about to put out an attack. And yeah, her face, and just the sculpt of this overall looks great. I like how she's kind of being held up. And yeah, I don't know, something, it's just, it's just about that, the way this figure is sort of like posed, I think looks fantastic. Uh, don't know too much about this character, but yeah, I just want to obviously point out the lovely sculpt and work done by, I hope I can find the person who sculpted this, uh, Numakura Toshiaki. I think they did a fantastic job with the sculpt, and yeah, I would like to see this colored, but again, in the end, for this one, I'm not going to pre-order, but... I think she overall just looks beautiful. After that, we are moving on to the first of a couple of Miku figures I have for this list, or that were announced, and this is the Hatsune Miku Expo 2021 onlo online version by Alpha Max. So I do think this is a fantastic Miku design overall. I like the sort of world theme, the sort of globe base, and just her outfit, how silvery it looks overall. But there's a part of me that doesn't feel like I want to pre-order this figure. Like, I think she's super cute and very well designed overall, but I feel like there's just other Miku designs that I want to get figures of compared to this one. No offense to people who really love this one. I'm happy for you. I think, obviously, she's beautiful. I love the way her- I actually really love the way her twin tails kind of, like, spiral and just the silver on her outfit, but yeah. For me, it's just not one Miku I feel like I would like want to have in my collection at the moment, but overall, I think she is just super pretty. But again, I don't think I feel like spending the money on her. So after that Miku figure, we have one that I've kind of been anticipating for a little bit because I have some of the figures from this series pre-ordered, and that is the uh, Neon Genesis Evangelion. Nagisa Kaoru 1 7th version Radio Ava Part 2 by Hobby Max. So they finally colored this Kaoru figure, and I have to say, I do overall like it. Um, I f if I can get a better picture, because I kind of hate the picture that they put for this one, it's kind of hard to see, and that's the only one apparently. But yeah, they have this Kaoru figure. I do like the yellow sort of plaid shirt with the jacket. Now, this one is one that kind of worries me a bit because like I actually do kind of like the monochrome version as well. I'm not gonna, you know, buy both. I would like to pick one over the other. I might go with the colored version, but this is one of the ones that I feel like I I actually really like the monochrome version. Just with his, obviously his more white hair and just the, you know, the gray scale like plaid out uh, shirt underneath him. And yeah, so obviously right now I am quite torn between these two because I think they both look good, but obviously I don't want to spend the extra money on two different versions of a figure. So yeah, uh, let me let me know if you guys are looking forward to this Kaoru figure, which one have you decided to pick up? For me right now, it is currently the color, but when that pre-order date, um, when the pre-order is open for him, my mind will probably maybe change. We'll have to see. So after that one, we actually have, uh, as you can probably see from the screen, a figure that I have already pre-ordered, and it is the Altair Giyu, uh, Tomioka Giyu by Altair, so this is a 1 8th. So of course they made the lovely Shinobu Altair figure a while back, and 
I have to say, I kind of do like the sort of like simpler look that Ultra is going for for these Demon Slayer figures. I do think the water looks fantastic. The one thing I've heard people kind of like are confused about with Gyu is his pose with his left hand. It looks like it's supposed to hold the sheath, but it doesn't, which I think is a little bit weird. So I don't know exactly what he's doing, but I don't know. It's a simple Gyu figure, but I think he just looks so good and obviously Alter will deliver on the quality. Yeah, <laughs> so there's that. The price though kind of was a little bit iffy for me, so he it says here he's 20,800 yen, which is around 159 USD, which does feel like a lot compared to what um, the Shinobu was. I think she was close to 130 USD. I'm going off of Ami Ami pricing. But yeah, I still overall just quite like this Gyu. I would like to see the Alter do the other Hashira, because I think that'd be kind of a nice little simple collection of the Hashira figures. And yeah, who knows? We'll have to see. I hope they make a Rengoku. Um, but yeah, a simple looking Gyu figure, but at the same time, um, Alter does these Demon Slayer figures well so far. So yeah, looking forward to when he's finally released. So after Gyu, we have another altar figure, and this one was a pretty standout one. This is from Arknights. This is the Schwartz 1 7th Elite 2 version by Alter. This is a very, very impressive figure. Uh, sorry that this first one is kind of blurry, but you can see how massive this figure is going to turn out, especially because, yeah, she is a 1 7th, so it's going to be a pretty big figure. But, and probably very expensive with all that detail and this giant crossbow. But, I don't know, she's very cute looking, I like her face. I'm not too sure what type of like animal, because she's got like little animal ears, it's cute. Her hair looks fantastic, the transparent jacket looks beautiful. The crossbow is very nicely detailed. And yeah, so yeah, there's the prototype, and then you have the colored version, which, it looks, it looks fantastic. Like, if you love this character, I feel like Alter is doing them justice. Uh, unfortunately, um... <laughs> I don't know, again, I don't play Arknights. I do think it's a fantastic character design overall, but just the space that this character will take up, the ver especially the vertical space it will take up, for me, it's a pass. It's kind of a sad pass, but if you really like this character, um, I'm very glad that you have like this figure as like your sort of character representation, and I know that Alter will, of course, do a very great job with this figure. So after that lovely figure, we're moving on to, oh, another Toho figure that kind of stood out to me. This is the Toho Project Isayoi Sakuya 17th by Imon Toys. I overall just really love if I can also find a better picture because this is, that's not the greatest picture in the world to show off during this. Oh, they're so small is the problem. But yeah, there we go. That's a good one. Just look at the dynamic sort of pose she's in with the the knives sort of flying out in this sort of effect part. And she also has like the clock that she's standing on as her base. It's a very impressive figure overall. Um, at the time I was thinking that this would maybe be a pre-order for me, but at the same time I'm thinking space again. I'm, you know, I'm thinking space and stuff, but it's just a very nice Sakuya figure overall. And if you're a big Sakuya fan, I feel like this would definitely be one of like her better ones. And yeah, so very nice figure overall. Really like how dynamic it is. So after that one, we have another Miku one that I feel like not a lot of people talked about. And I can kind of maybe see why with it. It is the, if I can go back down to the thing, the Hatsune Miku 1 7th 39 day commemorative figure by Spirit Tail. Now, yeah, this is like, Miku is kind of in like her regular outfit, but she's got like this cape on, she's got a crown, she's got like this ball thing and a scepter. Uh, I do like the overall set piece of it, but I don't know, maybe they could have given this Miku kind of like a sort of royal vibe instead of just kind of throwing her in her basic outfit. But, you know, we'll have to see this colored. I'm not too sure if they have an illustration. Okay, no, we do have an illustration. Yeah. Oh, I think I've seen this one before. Okay, that's kind of like an interesting one overall. Um, not the type of Miku I would probably pre-order, but yeah. Obviously, I think I do like the base and sort of the set piece of this, but yeah. 
So it's <laughs> it's another Miku uh, figure that I will definitely not be pre-ordering just because I think it's alright, but not the type of Miku I would have in my collection. So the next figure I want to show off is actually a figure that I saw in the OneFest G, I believe. And it was just a concept, but now they have a prototype. And this is the Black Rock Shooter Dawnfall Black Rock Shooter <laughs> figure by Spirit Tail. Uh, I just want to really point it out because of how, like, the motorcycle, I feel like, or whatever this vehicle is supposed to be called, looks, you know, it was a big, like, part of that illustration. I was like, oh, how are they going to translate into, into figure form? Well, we kind of got it, and yeah. It's sort of a pretty action-y one, and I do like the details on the mo the vehicle. I also like the details on her cannon, I think it is, and yeah. It's a pretty dynamic figure overall. It's gonna be a very vertical figure, and yeah, so very dynamic. There's the original art. Very kind of cool, and yeah, I'm curious to see if do they even say how big this is. Um, I'm gonna be curious to see how big this figure is, because I feel like it'll take up a lot of space, so personally a skip, but a sort of cool dynamic figure nonetheless. So next up we have another Toho figure, this is the Hakure Reimu 1 7th by Emon Toys. We still just have this illustration right now, but it's just looking, you know, it's a very beautiful illustration. I'm curious to see if also Emon Toys will do the other Toho characters who are in this illustration. That would be kind of cool to have them as a set, um, but yeah. It's a very gorgeous illustration overall, and I'm curious to see how it transfers into figure form. And I hope it does it does well when it transfers to figure form, because this is obviously a very beautiful illustration, so yeah. Just overall, just a very like sweet looking illustration overall, and yeah, so excited to see how this one looks in the future. So after that figure, we have this one right here. Oh, okay. I forgot the manufacturer, but it is this original character, Tichon? Teochan, I don't know how to pronounce it, but by uh, Union Creative. Um, so I did quite like the sort of pose for this character, and I thought it was kind of interesting. And I'll go to obviously the original art. I just think she looks, I don't know, she looks so cute overall. I don't know, it's, it's so nice. <laughs> I mean, a little bit lewd, but she's just got like, you know, it's a very nice illustration by. Nekojira. Nekojira is the original artist for this character. Um, the one thing I'm not too sure of with this one is I'm kind of looking at her head and it does look a little bit weird from this angle um, from what I've seen. Okay, there's a few more. It does kind of feel like a little bit big up top. Maybe that's just me, but yeah. Um, I'd like to see this colored because this one I am kind of considering because it looks, you know, I really like this original character design, but yeah. We'll have to see with this one. Union Creative can be a little bit hit or miss, but I hope for this one that they do hit when it is colored and up for pre-order. So after that one, we actually have another Miku, <laughs> but this one, of course, is based off, you know, the Monaki Miku design, so this is the CA Works Hatsune Miku X Monaki Neko 1 7th um, by CA Works. Okay, Kadokawa was the manufacturer, but yeah. This is based off, of course, the Monaki Miku design, which had a Ninjaroid that I recently pre ordered. Um, but yeah, I'm curious to see how this is as a scale. Um, I actually would like to get this to go with that Nendroid Monaki Miku, like I said, with the sort of strawberry-themed uh, 15th anniversary Miku Nendroid. I'd like to go that to go with the scale version, because yeah, I overall just, of course, really love the Monaki Miku design, and I obviously would like to see the prototype of this in the future and in colored, and I think if they go with this sort of pose, I think it would be super cute overall. So yeah, looking forward to this one being translated into um, figure form. So after that, Miku, we have a figure, not really a figure, but a concept art for a future figure, and it is the Avian Romance 1 7th by Apex Innovation. So I hope it- ooh, that's, again, not a good picture. Okay, to the best of my abilities, I'll just leave it like this by this user. Um, it's very- <laughs> very kind of romantic, I don't know. But we have these this girl with white hair and a black or in a white outfit and the girl with a black hair and black outfit under this sort of very beautiful, very tranquil underwater scene. 
Um, and yeah, so I'm interested to see how this translates to a figure. Obviously, I don't know if they're just going to do the girls or if they're going to also do kind of this nice little, you know, have some sea creatures around them. It's going to be, you know, interesting because obviously it's a beautiful concept and you would like them to include a whole bunch of like, or like everything in there. But obviously it's tough because it is quite a sort of, um, you know, like it's hard to fit all the details in like a figure like this, but yeah. Um, just very interested to see what they overall do with this concept art. So after that gorgeous concept art, we're moving on to yet another Miku. And this one is the Hatsune Miku Takene S-Fire by Sega. So this is the first Sega figure I actually have like ever talked about on this list, but um, it's just a very cute looking like Miku and sort of like a panda theme with the little panda buns, looks cute in her outfit. Simple, yet very cute overall. Um, so I'm not too sure what exactly the S-Fire, S-Fire I think is like, they're sort of like higher end figures by Sega. So yeah, there's the original illustration of this Miku. It just looks very, very cute overall. And yeah, so I'm not too sure if I want to get this one. It is a cute design overall, but again, with some other Miku designs, I feel like these sort of like, it's kind of hard to get like every Miku design you want, but I feel like for me at least, there's some that kind of stand more uh, out more than others, but still a cute um, sort of like panda outfit, panda theme. So yeah, interested to see how this one turns out as a figure. So now we're moving on to actually the other sort of Bomber Girl figure. So this one is by Wave. This is the Bomber Girl Pine figure. So if I can bring up, I'll bring up some of the, the, um, the actual figure <laughs> pictures. Yeah, I really like her face. She looks kind of very like smug and just the colors that she has look very nice overall. I do like Aqua maybe a smidge better than this one. Um, she still looks cute. Still looks like a cute sort of like smug, sadistic kind of looking figure. But yeah, I also do like, I think her tail is supposed to be kind of like a sparkler or something. If I can bring up a good picture. Yeah, her tail is supposed to actually be kind of like a sparkler, which I think that's actually a pretty cool touch to this character's design. But yeah, um, not too sure about this one. But, you know, it'd be kind of cool if you really like this series to have like these newer figures come out and you can just put them together. But yeah, for me right now, I feel like that Aqua figure kind of won me over compared to this one, but I still like this character's design overall. So now moving on, we actually have the second sort of new figure announced for the um, Komajo Densetsu uh, Toho project. So this is the Flandre Scarlet figure by Koski. We only have the concept of this one, but she just looks like obviously a very sort of sadistic looking vampire in this one. I really like sort of the details on her wings, how they actually have these sort of nice like filigree or I don't know what the heck you call it, like very nice like patterns to them and obviously she looks obviously it's much more like a mature Toho figure, I don't know, but it looks very cool. I actually do have a figure of this character pre-ordered, um, I won't say what, but I feel like it's, it's fairly recent of, of this character so I feel like people could probably guess what it is, but yeah, very cool overall, I'm interested to see like again what this looks like as a figure. And after that one, we actually have one that's in a draft, but I kind of wanted to point it out. This is the My Dress Up Darling Inui Sajuna Quest Q figure. Uh, so I'm not too sure if they're just going to do regular Inui in, I guess, her regular outfit, I guess. But yeah, it's just this right now. I guess they just announced it. They don't have anything for it. But yeah, I have been watching My Dress Up Darling. I have been enjoying it quite a bit. Um, a lot more than I thought I would. Um... Personally, I really do like Marin over Inui. I do think Inui is still cute, but I would obviously prefer a Marin figure to her. And right now, I'm still currently waiting on the, I think it's the E-Stream Marin one, where she's in her first, like, cosplay outfit. So yeah, that's the one I'm most anticipating for, but yeah. I'm just interested to see what sort of, if they pick an outfit or a cosplay for this figure, or if they just do regular Inui. I'm hoping for a cosplay, because I think that would be just very cool. Obviously, it's a little bit more unique than just throwing her in a school uniform. So after that one, we have a figure, or at least two figures, 
that I'll be talking about simultaneously because they're supposed to be kind of like duo figures and that is the Toho Project Flandre and Vermilia Scarlet by Amon Toys. Um, I do kind of like duo figures, obviously it's, you know, it kind of expensive if you want them both. But I overall just really like the sort of concept for this one. Okay, there's only one picture unfortunately, so I can only show this one. And yeah, I just really like the concept art for this, and I think they look very nice together. Unfortunately, like I said, I do have a Flandre figure on pre-order, and unfortunately, that has a sort of Romelia to go with it. So, these ones are going to be a skip, but I do think, you know, I'll, I'll see. But those ones that I have pre-ordered um, for, like, Flandre specifically, and then Romelia, those are going to be kind of my go-to for these characters. But I'm interested just to see how this figure looks overall as a figure because I overall do like, again, I do like the concept, I do like the blue and red flames kind of clashing, and I do kind of like how well these two look together in this concept art. Now moving on to this next one. So I came across this one on the Wonderfest and I saw it and I kind of fell in love with the design so I should go back. <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself but this is the Twisted Wonderland Vil Schoenheit. Aniplex figure. So this is from the Disney mobile game Twisted Wonderland and this figure actually kind of got me playing the game a little bit. I started playing it a bit and I've been enjoying it. I think it's a very cute game overall and the designs of the boys are hot, okay? Uh, we have a bunch of Bishi boys and yeah. He looks great, this concept looks great. He is supposed to be kind of the evil queen of from this game. He's just very handsome. Um, and this figure actually made me look back at the other Twisted Wonderland characters, um, figures that are out right now, and I may or may not have bought, like, two of them. Unfortunately, um, one of them, which is coming out, I believe, in August, which is Azul, who's supposed to be kind of like the Ursula from the series, uh, he's unfortunately- I couldn't find a pre-order, and I'm gonna have to wait in the aftermarket for him, and then I pre-ordered Another one of the Twisted Wonderlands characters that have been- that's been up for pre-order. So yeah, um, this game is uh, consuming my life a little bit, and yeah. Um, but I have heard that these Aniplex Twisted Wonderland figures, they have kind of binned a little bit in the aftermarket, like they've gone down. Which I'm kind of surprised at, because I feel like this game is pretty popular, and I thought the prices would just skyrocket, but they haven't. So I'm- well, back to Azul, I'm praying that his price kind of stays the same or goes down and doesn't shoot up massively, and yeah. So obviously, when Vil is up for pre-order, I'm going to pre-order this because I think he's so handsome, and I love his outfit, and I love those high heel shoes he's wearing, like... Stop. <laughs> I don't know. They're all handsome, and yeah, so looking forward to when this figure gets, um, a figure. So now moving on to the next figure that is going to be a definite pre-order for me, no matter what, because I love this character's design so much. And this is the Blue Archive Kosaka Wakamo 17th by Neon Max. Like, look at this character design, and I have to kind of go to a different page to bring up like the full body, because yeah. Like, like look at this character's design. It's just, again, it's kind of like that sort of like, you know, flowers. Possibly cherry blossoms, I don't want to say that they are. And just her fox mask, her gun looks so good. Um, and then her like whole tail, it just... It's a very beautiful character design overall. And like, I don't know anything about Blue Archive or this character, but I just... Her outfit and just like design just totally won me over. So this one is, for me, a definite, definite pre-order. I'm so excited to see this into... Um, become a figure in the future. Now moving on to the next figure that I also kind of want to pre-order. It's kind of high up there. And that is this original character Sui... Suiyu? One Seventh by Wings Inc. It's just this very gorgeous sort of tech wear or like... not really tech wear I should say. It's more like a sort of like dragon girl with like these katanas and just this outfit. And just, you know, her tail looks beautiful, the horns look great, her design is just fantastic. And yeah, so I'm just very interested to see how this becomes a f in translates to a figure because I just think she's gorgeous overall, gorgeous character design, and I cannot wait to see this 
into a figure because this one for me is also a definite pre-order. Now moving on to the last couple of figures, so these ones are actually garage kits, so they're not pre-painted figures and they're not being like manufactured by a specific like company. So yeah, unfortunately some of these that I liked are, unfortunately, I won't be picking up for because they're, you know, you have to assemble them yourself, you have to paint them yourself, and I don't have the skills or the necessary materials to do these ones, but I thought I'd point these out because I feel like these like circles who made these they definitely deserve some recognition because these are some amazing looking garage kits. So the first one we have here is one that I'm probably going to have to censor a little bit because she's kind of um, kind of nude. So this is the original character Kasuka 16 Eldora model. So the circle is... okay, Eld Eldora model is the circle and yeah. Um, probably going to have to yeah, censor this in some areas. Do we actually have like... yeah, I'll probably maybe go to the original art because yeah. Anyway, you'll probably have to see, you'll see why. You'll let you see why she kind of has to be censored a little bit. But this fishbone sort of like thing around her looks fantastic. I love the roses on it. I love her design. And just, oh, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous model kit. And yeah, so it's 36,364 yen. So that's how much it is to buy the pieces for this kit. But yeah, I think I'll let me see if anyone has actually good pictures of it. It's all probably not safe for work because it is. But yeah, so there's ex there it is. That's pretty much what you're getting, and you're gonna have to assemble this yourself. Oh my god. Yeah. She just looks obviously very gorgeous overall. It's just obviously a shame that this is what it is. It's a model kit, unfortunately. So yeah, um, it's just, it's stunning. It's stunning, very nice detail overall, and I actually do hope that someone, from pretty much like any of these garage kits I'll be talking about, I'm hoping that someone picks these up to make into actually pre-painted figures, because I would, I would buy this, because it's that good of a figure. So yeah, hoping for that in the future, because like, like look at the detail on those fins, and just the fish skull, looks fantastic overall. After that, we have actually two characters from the same series, so I'll talk about them one at a time. And the first one I have saved here is the Bobo Stray Dogs Nakahara Chuya. Um, so this is by the Circle Muki Manuki <laughs> and N Collection. And I saw this and I, I literally thought this was a scale figure. He just looks like the sculpting on his jacket and his outfit, like the wrinkles and yeah, I feel like he's sort of supposed to match with the Dazai that they made, but yeah, just look at all that detail. Look how nice this figure looks and how well sculpted he is. Again, unfortunately, he is... obviously there's Dazai. <laughs> but yeah, obviously, he is unfortunately a garage kit and what does he retail? He's 26,000 yen, which obviously is expensive. And yeah, unfortunately, he is a garage kit, so you will have to assemble him. And uh, yeah, so there's Chuya, he looks fantastic, and also who looks fantastic is the Dazai by the same people. Yeah, very simple looking Dazai figure, but still very handsome, still very well done, well painted. And yeah, so again, I'm hoping someone picks these up too, like as pre-painted figures, because I think these sculpts are absolutely amazing, and these two look good together. Like. I've only watched like oh, the first season of Bungo Stray Dogs, but I'm hoping, hoping that someone picks these up as actual scale figures because I think a lot of people would buy them because they look obviously very fantastic overall. Now the very last figure is a figure that I was blown away when I first saw this. I cannot believe that they showed a figure like this in this one fest, and it is the Hoseki no Kuni Pad Paracha by R. Uh, dot Gallet CC as the circle. Like, look at this figure. I was like jumping out of my seat when I saw this one. This looks like so gorgeous. I love the way they made Pod Paracha's hair. Just their body sculpt overall looks fantastic. The base looks great. It's just an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous Hoseki no Kuni figure, which unfortunately is relegated to a garage kit, and it just it upsets me. I need someone to pick this up and actually make it pre-painted because oh, it looks so good. I love 
you know, the base. Obviously, it represents Padparaja's um, body because they basically were missing parts of themselves. And yeah, that's kind of what that's supposed to represent. And yeah, that's why you can kind of see the, the gem parts on their chest because they literally have like other pieces put into them to kind of help them sort of stay like awake and alive in quotes. But yeah, this circle is fantastic. I have to say they do some very nice Hoseki no Kuni figures. Uh, I might just quickly pop them up on screen because I won't don't want to go too far in deep in depth into them. But let me tell you, this freaking Paparacha figure is so fantastic. This is one that if it were to be a pre-painted figure, I would buy it on the spot. Like any of these Hoseki no Kuni figures that is made by this circle, I would I would buy because they're that good. Unfortunately, this one is 40,000 yen. 40,000 yen for this garage kit. And it just... When I saw that price, I'm like, holy... You know what? <laughs> it was it was so bad. It was so bad. And yeah, I'm hoping, obviously, if someone picks this up as a pre... Like, you know, for a pre-painted figure, it is less than that. Obviously. Because, yeah. In the end, I think this circle definitely does deserve these figures to be pre-painted. Obviously, that's completely up to them, but I am... For me right now, it's my fingers are crossed that figures from this circle, specifically these Hoseki no Kuni figures, get turned into um, full-on pre-painted figures because I think I would love to have these in my collection overall. Now for this sort of last section I have here, these are the ones I could not find on my figure collection. Um, so unfortunately, yeah, I'm, we're back here, back to full body me, and, um, yeah. So I'm sorry if I also look like a hot mess, but, yeah, I'm gonna try and get through these as quick as I can. Uh, I have liked these, so I'm gonna just have to quickly scroll through my likes to find these, and obviously flash the picture up to show you guys. And, yeah, I'll get started with that right now. So the first figure that I have that unfortunately I couldn't find on my figure collection is by Apex Toys. This is the 1 7th scale figure of Chen Ageless Afterglow version, I guess. I saw this figure and I thought how like elegant she looks and I really like the dragon in the back. I feel like I like I quite like dragon girls. So yeah, she's got a very like nice looking outfit overall and just I don't know, it's very nice for what it is at the moment, and I cannot wait to see this one painted. So the next figure I want to talk about that I couldn't find on my figure collection is this Lamplight Demon Girl. Um, this is going to be manufactured by Hoppy Sakura, and it is an illustration by Mito. And I just like what I see so far with this. I like the design of the character, the lamp, and yeah, so... You know, I just have this illustration to go off by, but right now with it, I'm quite impressed and I would really like to see this character be put in figure form. And after that, this one was actually on my My Figure Collection page, but then I went back to it and it was gone. So I'm going to my, my Twitter likes and I'm, you know, going to show off this figure. And this is from B-Box. This is the 1-6 scale Roro, Roro Hoshi-chan. Uh, so this is an illustration by Kohaku Kuroboshi, and from this illustration, and they do have the prototype, I really like this girl's design overall. Um, this figure will look pretty good with that, I think, ribose lily wine figure, so there's that. And yeah, I just really like this character's design overall, and yeah, I can't wait to see it painted. So I guess also a few additional figures that I realized I did not add to my My Figure collection that I kind of want to mention. Um, so this first one right here is the Neon Max by Neon Max Japan. This is the 1-6 figure Noir, who, and the original illustration is by Tori Damo. <laughs> but yeah, it's kind of this, she's kind of thick, this thick sort of like ram girl in like this sort of like nun-like outfit. I don't know. Again, I just really like this character's design, and this one I'm on the fence about possibly pre-ordering, because, I don't know, it it looks great, she looks great, but I'm not too sure how I, you know, how I overall feel, like if I really want her in my collection, but yeah, very nice character design overall, and yeah, I just wanted to point that one out. And now the last one I quickly kind of want to mention before, you know, 
I, you know, finished this off is kind of a last minute one because it's a figure with a scythe and I feel like I have to mention every figure with a scythe and that is the Medicos Entertainment Dark Schneider um, figure. I'm only talking about the one, this one figure, he's from the anime Bastard and I just wanted to point him out because goddamn, that scythe looks great. <laughs> he looks obviously very crazy. It's a very cool looking figure overall. This is probably not one that I'm going to pre-order even with the scythe because I I don't know. <laughs> this is not the type of figure I want, but I will admit that scythe looks fantastic. This figure looks very, very cool, but not one that I want in my collection. So yeah, we're ending it off with this one because I had to end it off with a sort of scythe figure. So that concludes my overall Wonder Festival 2022 summer. There were a whole bunch of gorgeous looking figures and obviously I had to kind of pick and choose which ones I would really want to pre-order. Obviously you can probably tell my enthusiasm for some of them that they'll be like you know definite and yeah so let me know if you guys have any sort of similar ones you've liked like I have on my list or what are ones that you have liked what are your highlights from this Wonder Festival and yeah I apologize also if I kind of talked pretty fast through this because obviously the weather I would obviously also like to get this video out pretty like you know decently quick because this is obviously you know a fairly popular event and I don't know if you guys would really like to hear my thoughts about this so yeah and obviously dealing with my iPhone and how you know it overheats and yeah so yeah thank you all so much for watching I hope you all have a wonderful morning afternoon or night wherever you are and take it easy goodbye